All right, it's a pleasure to be back. Good to have you on board today. We're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs in 2019, taking a look at some of the things that they've done. We're kind of midstream here. We've just gotten through the heaviest part of free agency where a lot of the elite players are off the board. A lot of the heavy money has been spent. We're about two or three weeks out from the draft, so it's a great time to just stop and take a look at the transactions that Brett Veach has made so far this offseason, and he has made a ton. He has been very busy, surprisingly busy, trying to improve the football team, and really the biggest thing he's tried to do so far is just try to reshape and remold that defense. This is something he started last offseason. Last offseason during 2018, he really started this idea of trying to revamp the defense. We knew it would continue this season. He's continued it even more than we expected in 2019, really trying to reshape that defense and turn it into something very different than it's been the past couple of seasons, which is one of the worst, if not the worst, defense in all of football. So we're going to take a look at that today. I'm not necessarily worried about necessarily how much he has or hasn't improved the overall football team, but what we are going to do is take a look at each transaction so far and try to isolate that transaction. For the most part, I agree with everything Brett Beach has done this offseason. I think he's had a really good, a really efficient offseason. I'm going to quibble and nitpick at a couple of things, but nothing is ever perfect. So all of that is is quibbling and nitpicking, but by and large, I like everything that he's done this offseason. I'm going to start here with Tyrone Matthew and Alex Okafor. They're going to slide over and look at five of the guys that they let go, and then we're going to finish up looking at some of the guys that they've actually brought in as well. The Tyron Matthew contract, this is the big one for the offseason. This is the big free agent signing that they did. I had no clue that they were actually going to go after him. I didn't get a chance to do a video on this, but Matthew was a guy that I was really hoping the Chiefs would target, and I didn't think they were going to do it. I, all we've been hearing was Earl Thomas and Landon Collins in connection with the Chiefs. I thought they were going to be too pricey. I thought Tyron Matthew was going to be the more affordable option. And that's why I was really hoping that the Chiefs would go after him. I didn't think they would, but they did. They ended up getting him. He turned out being more pricey than I thought. The reason for that, the entire safety market this season turned out to be more expensive than anybody really predicted. We were used to seeing cornerbacks get a lot of money in free agency, but the safeties this year were really the good group. And because of that, we saw that entire group get a lot more money than we expected. So at some point, I probably would have turned off the Tyron Matthew negotiations, I probably wouldn't have gone this high, but even so, I, I like the way that they've got Matthew, and we're going to talk about the contract, three years and $42 million. Guaranteed at signing, this is always the important number when you look at contracts. It's the most important number. The other numbers are important, but they're not as important as this. Guaranteed at signing, $26.8 million. It's a good deal for Tyron Matthew, no matter what happens, even if he never gets to step on the field for the Chiefs. He is guaranteed $27 million, so that's a hunk of change for Tyron Matthew. It's a good deal for him. That first season right there, 2019, it's only $5.9 million to have him on the team. And this is really an upgrade in terms of talent in the secondary. If a healthy Eric Berry could play, you'd probably just as soon have a healthy Eric Berry. But that did not happen. We're not even sure it was ever going to happen. So Tyron Matthew being there in the secondary is a massive talent upgrade. Now to be sure, Matthew is not an elite defender. He is not one of the NFL's best of the best defenders, but he is that next group down. He is very, very good. He's going to absolutely lock down that starting spot. He's going to do a lot of things from a flexibility standpoint. He can cover. He is good in coverage. He's not great in coverage. He's even better in the box against the run is where his numbers suggest that he is the best at. But he can do it all. Tyron Matthew can do everything that you need a safety to do. He's very flexible. You can move him all over the football field. So the defense, Spagnolo is really going to enjoy having Tyron Matthew back there. And for the first season, the cap hit is only $5.9 million. Now, here's where I'm going to quibble a little bit and nitpick. In 2020, that cap hit jumps, and I mean jumps big, to $16.3 million. That's a massive jump in cap space. If I were going to do anything different, and this is just me quibbling and nitpicking again, I would have raised that $6 million cap hit this season, and I would have lowered the cap hit in 2020. Why didn't Brett Veach do that? Probably because they're going to have more cap space in 2020 to work with than they do this offseason. Even so, I think what I would have rather have just not had that cap hit in 2020. By the time you get to 2021, this is really just going to be a two-year deal. It's a $19.7 million cap hit in 2021. 
that number is pretty much what teams are paying for elite edge rushers right now. It's awfully close to what Khalil Mack will be making that season. It's going to be awfully close to what Von Miller will be making that offseason. So in reality, I don't think you're going to see the Chiefs keep him around for 2021, the third season of that contract. I think you're going to see him let him go for $4.9 million unless they come back and restructure, which they very well could do at some point. But really, yeah, I would be very surprised that the Chiefs bring him back for that third season. But overall, I really like the Matthew deal. I was really excited that the Chiefs got him. I, I was very surprised by it. I thought they were looking in other directions. Everything we've been hearing was Collins or Thomas, Collins or Thomas. And it turns out Brett Veach surprised him very much and got Tyron Matthew. It's a good deal. It's not a great deal. It's a decent value. It's not a great value. But that aside, the talent alone is going to be very much worth bringing Tyron Matthew in and really upgrade the talent in that secondary. Start to try to at least take some pressure off of your secondary there to try to help uh, upgrade that. Move down to your next acquisition, Alex Okafor. I think the value here is much better. Even though Okafor is not the player that Matthew is at his position, I think the value is much better. Alex Okafor is a solid defensive end. He's been able to lock down the starting spot almost every season that he's been playing in the NFL almost every season. $3.1 million for this upcoming season. $3.1 million is a really low cap hit. And then it jumps to 7-1 and 7-9. Now the thing about Okafor is he is not stout against the run. For defensive ends, he's a little weak against the run. But the two things that he does offer, he can get pressure on the quarterback. He's not an elite edge rusher. He's not a fast twitch edge rusher. But he does get consistent pressure on the quarterback. We've seen that. He produces and get in a pass rush. Also, he's very comfortable dropping back into coverage. He's not an elite coverage guy, of course. No defensive end ever will be, but he offers that flexibility. So this is something you've seen from both Okafor and Matthew. You've got two guys here who offer flexibility for the defense. So this is important. Today's defenses have to change and develop and morph from game to game and from play to play. All right, so Okafor offers that. He is comfortable dropping back into coverage. Anytime you want to do zone schemes and you want to drop him back, or you want to blitz somebody else, you want to blitz a corner, you want to blitz a Tyron Matthew, Okafor can do that. I think the Chiefs are also hoping that playing alongside Chris Jones, Chris Jones is the one going to be getting a lot of, uh, of the attention from other offenses. Chris Jones is the guy who's going to get double and triple teamed. You would hope that Alex Okafor could take advantage of that. We've already seen that he can produce against quarterbacks rushing. So we would like to see him step up and maybe have a couple of career seasons there. But the price is right. Even if, even if he doesn't work out, even if he gets injured or he's just not producing, for $6.8 million, you can get out of that contract. That's all the dead cap space you'll hit, and you can move on from him. But I think the Chiefs are really going to like Okafor. It's not a splashy move, but the value is there. This is a really good move here by Brett Beach. So I like both of these, even though I think the value is here and the talent is here. No surprise on those two ends. Here's where some of the surprises start to come in. And these were the players that the Chiefs let go. D Ford, I'm going to start right here at the top and work my way down. They traded D Ford to the 49ers for a second round draft pick next season. And basically they're going to get $15.5 million in cap space back for D Ford. When you're looking at trades, and this is something I think that a lot of people leave out, you can't just decide D Ford for a second round draft pick who got the better end of that deal. You always have to look at the money involved. The 49ers, in order to trade for D Ford and pick up and lose that second round draft pick, the 49ers had to give him basically a five year deal with a, a large cap pit every single season. So you also have to take into effect that the, into, into account the fact that the Chiefs, the 49ers cannot take that money and spend it on somebody else. They're spending it on D Ford. The Chiefs, meanwhile, get a second round draft pick and they get that $15.5 million in cap space that they can now use to sign other people, not only this offseason, but in the seasons going forward as well because they're not having to pay forward. So will D. Ford turn into that elite edge rusher that we saw last year that everybody thought he could be when the Chiefs drafted him? Maybe, but for the first four seasons, all we saw from D. Ford was a real lack of production, a lot of injuries. Even when he was on the field, a lot of times he wasn't producing that much. So personally, I really like this trade. Now, it surprised me when they franchised D. Ford, I thought the plan was that they were going to give him one more season to see if he could really step up and be the elite guy that they thought he might could be years and years ago. 
thought that was the plan. Then Brett Veach turned around and surprised everybody and just traded him away. So me personally, I really like this deal. You get the second round draft pick next season, and you get all of that cap space back to play with. I personally did not want to hand a big contract to D Ford. So I don't really like what the 49ers did because we just haven't seen enough from D Ford to go and hand him a large contract. But San Francisco went ahead and did that. Brett Veach traded him away. So I'm a huge fan of this deal for the biggest reason being the first four seasons, we just didn't see enough production out of D Ford. My feeling is, and nobody knows this for sure, this is a chance the 49ers are taking. It's a chance the Chiefs are taking. So nobody knows for sure. My feeling is, that when you look at D Ford next season and the seasons to come, you'll see him revert back to somewhere in between the player he was for the first four seasons, which wasn't very productive, and the player he was last year, which was an almost elite edge rusher. So somewhere in between there, I think, and I don't want to pay for that. So I'm a huge fan of Brett Veach surprising us here and getting a 2020 draft pick and getting all that cap space to play with as well. No surprise here that Justin Houston was let go. The only surprising part of this, I figured that the Chiefs could trade Justin Houston, but I was wrong on that. Apparently, they couldn't find any trade partners. The reasons being, his cap pit was going to be $21 million this season and $19 million the next season, plus he's already crossed that 30-year-old mark. So that combination of age and the massive cap pit that he had, even though he's still an elite edge rusher in the NFL, Teams were just afraid of that. You know, at some point his production is going to drop off again. So teams were very afraid of that, and that's why nobody was willing to trade with the Chiefs for Justin Houston. Now, Justin Houston's already signed another good-sized contract with the Colts. He's got a two-year deal that's about $11.5 million per season. So he's turned out okay. He should produce there for the Colts. But that's why they couldn't find a trade partner. Now, what did the Chiefs get out of that? By cutting him, technically they're taking a $7 million cap hit this offseason, so that's wasted cap space but they free up $14 million. And basically that money was used to turn right around and sign Tyron Matthew. Next off season is where you really see the savings kick in. Next off season, no dead cap hit, $19 million cap space to work with. And that's gonna be all used largely to pay this number right here for Tyron Matthew for next off season where most of that money will go next off season. So I'm a huge fan of that right there, cutting Justin Houston. At some point, you knew that really, and really his production has never matched these massive cap hits that he has, but you knew at some point his production was really going to drop off and was really not going to be worth these cap hits that he was showing for the Chiefs. So no surprise there. Eric Berry. Let's talk about Berry for just a second. I, I've been trying to convince people in Kansas City for a couple of weeks now that you were tied to this guy for at least the next season and maybe even the season after that. Then Brett Beach turns right around and says, no, I'm not, and he cuts him anyway. So let's talk about the Eric Berry deal. In Eric Berry, you free up, when you cut Eric Berry, you freed up $9.6 million of cap space this season right now. Now, along with that, because his cap hit, basically a guaranteed cap hit, was $16.5 million, you've got about a $6.5 million dead cap hit this offseason right now. Even so, you save $9.6 million in cap space. Next offseason is where this really starts to hurt you've got an $8 million dead cap hit next offseason, okay? So that's that's where it really starts to hurt, is next offseason you get the $8 million. Now, why did I try to say that you guys were tied to him, and why did Brett Beach turn right around and go ahead and do it? This is why, and this is, I don't like this, but I think Brett Beach probably didn't have a choice. Everything we're hearing out of Kansas City is that the relationship between Eric Berry and the team over the past year had just disintegrated to such a point that Brett Veach really didn't have an option but to go ahead and go this route and let him go. By the way, it's a post-June 1st uh, cut, which is why you won't see this money. They're not allowed to use this money until after June the 1st, and that, at that point they can use that money on their draft class. They can use it on a free agent. But that's why Brett Veach appears to have let him go, and if that's the case, then I would agree that Brett Veach didn't have a choice. This isn't a pretty option. Even though you free up the cap space this year, you take a cap hit next season, it's not a pretty option. The best option would have been to have a healthy Eric Berry come back and play. Even if he played alongside Tyron Matthew for a season, that would have been the best option. It appears that that just wasn't going to happen. That the, that the relationship between Eric Berry and the team had just gotten so bad that they weren't going to be able to bring him back. Also, and nobody has come out and said this yet, but there may have been some question marks about whether or not Eric Berry could ever even hit the field again as a viable starter. So there, uh, there's a real question there. 
either one of these could have been the reason that Brett Beach decided to go ahead and let Eric Berry go. And that being the case, even though you were tied to him financially and you are tied to him financially for the next two off seasons, even so, I think Brett Beach probably just didn't have a choice from the things that we're hearing come out of Kansas City. And those are all rumor based. Nobody knows that for sure. Nobody is saying that for sure. But that's just what we're hearing based on rumors. You guys in Kansas City can let me know what you're hearing in there as well. So that's Eric Berry. Here's two guys that we let go in free agency, Steven Nelson and Mitch Morse. No surprise here. We were pretty convinced that the Chiefs just weren't going to offer either of these guys. Steven Nelson, while you would have liked to have had Steven Nelson come back, Steven Nelson signs a three-year, $25 million contract, which is basically a one-year deal in Pittsburgh. So no surprise there. Uh, this is something the Chiefs just were not interested in trying to give the kind of money to Nelson. If I were Pittsburgh, I would not have given this kind of money to Steven Nelson, but if you're the Steelers, you did only give them a one-year deal, so it's not like they're going to be hurting for any more than one season. But no surprise there, Steven Nelson moves on. Mitch Morse moves on, and he really cashes in with the Buffalo Bills. Mitch Morse gets a four-year, $44.5 million deal. It surprised me how much money Mitch Morse got. Nelson would pretty much hit. We were pretty much able to predict how much money he was getting. Mitch Morse got a whole heck of a lot more money than anybody thought he was going to get. He gets a four-year, $44.5 million deal in Buffalo to be their center. Basically, the first two years of that deal are, are guaranteed. So he's pretty much guaranteed to get somewhere in the $20, $24 million mark. So he really cashes in. I'm happy for Mitch Morris. He really cashes in there in Buffalo, but certainly way more money than the Chiefs were ever going to give him. And I don't think they were even entertaining the idea of bringing him back at all from what we've seen and heard. So those are the guys that we've let go. A couple surprises in there, but overall, I agree with it. I even agree with the Eric Berry deal. If the reports we're hearing are true, that the relationship there was just so fragmented that it just wasn't going to work going forward, or if we find out that Eric Berry just isn't going to be healthy enough to play again, or he's not going to be healthy enough to really be a starter again, in that case, I certainly understand and would even agree with Brett Beach letting him go. Here's some moves that are kind of below the radar. In some cases, they're just adding depth. In some cases, it's taking a flyer on somebody that you think might could be a starter. Bashad Breeland coming over. You get a one-year, $2 million contract on him. I love, love this deal. In Bashad Breeland, you have a guy who is good in coverage. Not great, but he's good. He's solid. But who has been able to hold down a starting spot every year that he's healthy. Whenever Bashad Breeland is healthy, he's able to lock down that starting spot. Now, he's not a lockdown corner, but he has absolutely been able to hold down a starting spot and produce and produce and produce well. He's not an elite cornerback. Matter of fact, he may not quite be the cornerback that we've seen from Steven Nelson the past few seasons. You can kind of take your pick about what you'd rather have. We've seen more production out of Bashad Freeland, more, more consistent production. Some of the potential for Steven Nelson may be a little bit higher, but basically it's the same. Overall, it's the same player. For Bashad Breeland, though, you get one year, $2 million. Even if he doesn't play a single down, you haven't lost much out of this. You hope Breeland can come in, be the starter that he's been in other places, just really lock down that starting spot for him. Again, he's not an elite defender. You haven't solved all your talent problems at cornerback with this at any stretch. Even if you have, he's only there for one season. So even if he turns out that he is a very solid starter and you want to bring him back, you're going to have to sit down and renegotiate a, a legit contract with Breland. But I love this deal. You've got a guy here, and by the way, he was injured for most of last season. That's why you're able to get him at this, at this real value here. You've got a guy here who, if he does step in and, and take over the cornerback spot for a season, uh, what a value. $2 million is just absolutely nothing for a guy who can come in and start for you. If he's healthy, we'll find out if he's healthy or not. If he's not, you haven't lost much. You haven't tied in guaranteed money to it. You haven't pinned all your hopes on that. So I really, really love the Bashad Breeland sign. I think this is absolutely brilliant. For Damian Wilson, it would be a mistake, and this is what a lot of people are assuming. It would be a mistake to just assume that Damian Wilson is going to come over from the Cowboys and just absolutely step in and be the starter at outside linebacker. That's what is assumed. That's what's probably going to happen. But keep in mind, Damon Wilson has never been able to hold down a starting spot in any of his four seasons. I think it's four seasons that he played with the Cowboys. He's been able to produce. We've seen him produce, but he has never been able to hold down a starting spot for an entire season. So, now, you don't sign a guy to a two-year, $5.7 million contract unless you think that he is going to be able to step in and take that starter spot, but we're going to find that out in training camp. He's going to have to fight for this spot. In my opinion, and I haven't measured out all the things that 
uh, Spagnuolo does at the outside linebacker spot. In my opinion, you would rather see one of your draft picks, maybe Dorian O'Daniel, step up and be able to be the starter. Damon Wilson would be the absolutely perfect backup. But you th the Chiefs are thinking that Wilson is going to be a great fit for the Spagnuolo defense, at outside linebacker. And if he is, then he's going to be a good value. Now, Wilson's not going to be an elite starter. Don't expect him to step up and just dominate the field. If he can come in and, and, and own that starting spot, though, you have a very good value here at uh, about uh, $2.7, uh, $2.5, 3 million dollars a season there. You have a good value there. So he's going to have to fight for this starting spot. Don't expect the Chiefs to just hand him the starting spot. Personally, I would really rather see Dorian or Daniel get to take a starting spot if he can step up and do it, but we haven't seen that from Daniel yet. So Damian Wilson is the guy that you're going to be looking at there. Moving on quickly, I'm almost done. Jordan Lucas is stepping into the safety spot. Jordan Lucas won't be starting. This is just adding depth at one year and $2 million. Jordan Lucas should add some good depth for you there. Uh, he won't be passing any of the other guys, Sorensen or Matthew at those starting spots or even you know some of the other guys that you have there. But Jordan Lucas will be stepping in right there, just adding depth for you. Anthony Sherman, we don't yet, as, at the time of this video, we don't yet know how much money he's making, but he's back on a one-year deal. This is a great, great move for the Chiefs. You'd really love to see this guy come back at the fullback spot. Along with the other running backs that you have back there, you're not going to be as electric this year as you were last year. But this guy really just offers the Chiefs a lot of a lot of push inside. He had a wonderful season, a, 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 a Pro Bowl season for the Chiefs this last year. So Anthony Sherman, that's a really good re-sign for just one season. And finishing up with Carlos Hyde for one year, $2.8 million. Carlos Hyde is not going to be your starting running back. I wouldn't expect that. But Carlos Hyde is a load. He really can carry the football with a lot of strength up inside. We've also seen that he can catch the ball out of the backfield. I think it was in 2017, he had almost 60 catches out of the backfield. He's not an electric player. He's not going to have a lot of yards after the catch, but certainly incredibly capable of being a safety valve, just being another a tool in the box for your quarterback. Carlos Hyde's going to step in at one year, $2.8 million, just really add to the depth of that running back spot. He is a load inside. He can move out and catch a lot of passes out of the backfield. We've seen that. So again, he's very flexible. And that's one of the things I like about several of the players here. With Breland and Hyde and Okafor and Matthew, you have guys who are very flexible and offer different options, and that really makes a huge difference, on, not only on defense, but on offense as well. All right, this has been kind of a random video. I appreciate you guys looking at this. It's kind of a hodgepodge of all the transactions. I bet by and far, I like everything the Chiefs have done. They're not finished yet for the offseason. they got the draft coming up. They're, they got a, a whole lot of assets. They have extra draft picks this year. And next year, it wouldn't surprise me to see the Chiefs if they didn't make some trades either for cornerback or for a, maybe a slot receiver, or if they didn't do that in the draft. We'll see that coming up in our next video. But appreciate everybody watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Have a great one. Bye.